Um, have good morning, everyone. Uh, thank you for being here, and thank you for the FOSDEM team to organize all of this. Really nice events. Really happy to be here to talk to you about Cartis, uh, which is a, a software we just released. It's a, it's a web application to simply create thematic maps uh, in three steps. It's actually a tool we designed for students. I'll, I'll tell you more about this. I am Paul Girard. I am from uh, Media Lab uh, Research Lab in, in Paris from Sciences Po. Um, and I'm here presenting a work that actually uh, some colleagues worked more than me on, uh, Benjamin and Audrey, who couldn't come today. So I just rep represent them. Um, our lab is a social sciences research lab uh, <coughs> in which we actually try to design what we call digital research methods, which means that we are trying to give researchers in social sciences new ways to do research uh, through the means of different digital tools. Um, and then because we're doing that and because we do science and we believe into the open science, uh, everything we do are free and open source software. You can check out our GitHub accounts in which we have many more projects. Um, so in this project, uh, we worked closely with uh, uh, another team from Sciences Po called Atelier de Cartographie, who are basically cartographers uh, who are really specialists into graphic semiologies. So they also are doing information visualizations, not only uh, maps, geographical maps, but also uh, data visualizations. Um, and they are doing that for teaching, uh, to support teaching activities, research activities, editions of books, or even for some museums. <coughs> um, you, can, you can follow those guys, uh, here are the names. Um, if you click on the icon on the website, well, actually, yeah, my slides are online in, in this URL. Um, and yeah, so um, thematic maps are uh, maps which looks like that. It's basically the kind of maps you, you, you might have stumbled upon during uh, your uh, teaching periods when if you open a, a geographical uh, history ma uh, book, you will find these kind of maps. Um, so in this map, for instance, it represents the world's uh, um, carbon dioxide emissions in 2013 um, with two different visual forms. The first one is the color of the area of the countries representing the per habitant emissions where the, the cycle forms represent the total amount of emissions. If you want to see more of their work uh, from Atelier Cartography, they have a Cartotech, which is a website where they actually publish all their uh, productions online on a Creative Commons license. So you can find more than that. OK, so the story starts when actually these guys from Atelier Cartography won a grant from un our university uh, organizations. Uh, to design uh, and develop a pedag pedagogical mapping tool. So the, the whole idea here was to provide students with a tool to do this kind of thematic maps. Um, so we started a, a tripartite collaboration where we have teaching cartographers. So they are at the same time really doing carto cartographies and maps at a high, high level of, of semiology and also teachers. Uh, we were more likely the digital message specialist and also um, uh, people used to drive uh, a f a free and open source software projects uh, on the agile methods with the agile methods uh, as 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 a mean, and um, and then we I hired a, a guy called Arno Petzel from a company called Apix, uh, who is a, a web application developer specialized into cartography, uh, cartographical tool. Um, so I have to to really say. Thank you and, and bravo to Arnaud, uh, who actually did all the, the hard work of coding everything you're going to see here. Uh, and uh, he really made a really great job. So if you need a good developer in this area, you, sh you could sh check uh, his uh, website. Um, so um, our first objective is to make things easily, as easily as possible. So we want our tool to be accessible for newbies. Uh, when I say that, it's like more likely um, Second, like licensed students, students uh, two years after baccalaureate in France. Um, we want to create a map, of course. For that, we make we have to make sure to have a mean to get the data for uh, for the map so to upload data, and then we want to be able to choose which map projection we are going to use, and we want this map to convey a message. So we invest a lot into means to uh, actually choose and tune visual forms to map the data on on the picture. So 
Um, to sum up, we have basically three steps in this tool. Um, I we are going to show it after. Right? Uh, first one is to upload data, of course, then to choose a map projection, and finally to add digital forms. In the uploading data uh, uh, step, what we uh, 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 the features we've developed are data, data type recognition. So you just uh, input a CSV and then try to understand whether that numbers columns or latitude column, longitude column, geographical names columns, or any kind of uh, simple uh, qualitative values like strings. And we also, uh, the tool proposed uh, geographical names alignments. So we are trying to, uh, uh, to recognize from a, a column with geographical names which one we have in our base map. Um, then we ask the user to choose a map projection and to, so we really want this tool um, to convey pedagogical uh, uh, also information. That's why we tried, well, the cartographers proposed um, uh, three different features to, um, to, to, to guide the user through their choice of map projection. The first one is area, so does that projection respect the areas? The second one is distance and the third one is angles. So the, Actually, this is all the map projection we the tool proposed so far. So we have, um, well, you know that, I, I'm sure. Um, and so what they did is actually they decided to, to qualitatively decide which one were the good ones to, to if you want to respect the areas or uh, the distance or the angle. And then it leads to people just to, to remember that the Mercator projections, which is the most commonly used because it's squared, it's, it's, it's quite convenient. It's really good for angle, but really bad for distance and areas. That's really one important uh, point for my colleagues from Atelier Cartography. But you can still use it if you want. Uh, and the last step is to tune the visual forms. Um, so here, basically, the idea is first to pick a variable from the data. You can have many different columns in your CSV. You pick one, and then you say, like, well, what I want to do with that? I want to add the symbols on my map. I want to um, draw colors on areas. And then you can tune the colors, the size. You can define classes. You'll see that, uh, how to, uh, to map the variations into different um, uh, classes using uh, means and, and all, all that kind of statistical treatments. And then finally, um, you have your map, you add the title, you add an author, you add the source, you tune the legend, and here you are, you have your CSV, C, uh, SVG, sorry, or your PNG. All right, so, uh, remember that map? Uh, the one they've done, I've, I've, I've picked up as an example. So what we're going to do now is to um, do a live mapping exercise. So I have find the data sets they've used to do the first one. So this map has, has been done basically in Illustrator, I think. I should have asked my colleagues about that, but I think it's mainly Illustrator. So now we're going to do it with, with Cartis using the same data. And here we are. Okay, so this is the data sets. Um, so it's basically uh, total, uh, total uh, dioxide emissions. We have many years. So I'm just going to uh, filter out, thanks to LibreOffice, the year we want to map. So let's go. Let's take that one. Ah, one more there. Yeah. So I just copy. And uh, let's go to Cartis. Oh, shouldn't have done that. All right. So here is Cartis. Um, the first thing. Uh, I will do is to change to English for you guys. Uh, so the first thing the, the, the tool proposes you is to select a map. So here I'm going to um, work on the world uh, countries, uh, um, the 2016 um, time. Uh, it it, um, it, it proposes you many different ways to describe countries. Um, so we have labels in different, in different languages. We also have like ISO codes. But you don't have to worry about this. If you need those to prepare your data, you can download this model to um, <coughs> do your cleaning. So the cleaning can be done, has to be done be preferably before. But if you, so if you just upload um, your CSV, so we, I have it here. And here you have um, the column recognitions, data type recognition I was talking before. And as you can see, um, well, you can see here, for instance, that the, the year has been understood as a lat, uh, latitude information. It's not, it's, it's, an, it's a numeric one. 
And then here you can see that he, 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 he doesn't uh, uh, succeed into um, casting strings into uh, um, country names for 24 cases on 220. And then here we have a little um, guide to let the, the users actually help the algorithm while not the algorithm the alignments process manually. So we try to do everything on uh, automatic ways, and if it's not, then, well, here, for instance, the um, <coughs> the A uh, uh, is probably what we say in French. Uh, French is not recognized because uh, we want the end in, in four letters, and this is this is true for everything. It's like almost there. Actually, we are sticking into uh, adding a kind of a fuzzy recognition mechanism here. We have the technology. We just have to put the button here, but you know, uh, we haven't done that so far. Um, so this is important because, like, if you don't do that, it will not recognize China mainland as as China. So you will have like missing points in your in your map, and you do you don't want that, right? Um, so this is um, yeah. Um, so I'll switch to I'll switch to the point where I've done that. Okay. <laughs> um, you see that? Like, Woohoo! It's done. Right, the Montserrat, I couldn't find Montserrat, so it means that I have more data in my files than I have on my base map. Okay, I can drop one, I'm, I'm, I'm fine with that. Um, the rest is pretty cool, so uh, we can go into the visualization, and this is where you close your eyes because I want to do that with you. All right, so, so I have my base map here, um, so it's for now empty. Here I can go back to choose different kind of uh, uh, base map if I want. Um, I have to click here. Uh, you can also tune the base map if you need um, to, you know, uh, for instance here you can change the longitudes, right? Uh, and then this is where the plus button um, gives you, uh, brings you to the second step, which is basically to create visual forms. So um, the first thing as I'm going to do is to take the total, uh, uh, no, I'm going to take the per capita uh, CO2 emissions, um, and then I'll use, and this is where the tools propose you to, uh, to decide which forms, uh, visual forms, oh, sorry, I'm, I'm in French, sorry about that. Yeah, better. Um, so here you can choose different visual forms. Um, so you have two ways. The first thing you have to choose is whether you want to consider these uh, variables as values or as categories. Quantitative vari variables, qualitative variables. And then the second choice is do you want to use symbols or areas? So here I'm going to use areas, continuous, scale. Uh, and here we are. Here we have the distributions of these values, and you can choose different uh, ways uh, to discretize your, um, your values, uh, regular interval, nested means, and quantiles. You can choose the number of classes you want. Um, so just to show you that that actually works, uh, right? You can change everything. You can also choose the color uh, patterns, so we pre uh, compute a lot of different color patterns to propose the user. Uh, so if I want to do something similar to the first one we had, I'm going to use a scale of red. Yep. I'm good. Or you can use hatching if you want. You remember this time where we are using hatchings? You can do it. Um, you can also reverse the scale if you like it better. Right. Um, you can also see your data aggregated if you need. Um, and here we are. We have our first visual forms, which is um, uh, areas colors. And then I'm going to speed up because I'm late. Um, then I'm, I'm adding a new visual, a new, a new variable with the total emissions. And now I'm going to use symbols. And then for the symbols, um, I'll actually use circles, and then I'll make them empty. Uh, no, sorry, I'm, I'm using the alpha, right? And then I'm just using the scale, using the USA as my maximum, I think. Maybe not. And here we are. Let's say we're good. Right. OK. Ta-da. So now we have uh, our uh, map, our visual forms. We have a legend. So that's pretty cool. And we just, OK, I added the titles, uh, uh, the, auth the source of data and uh, the author here. 
you can see that here uh, I did on the on the on the edge on the edge of the map, and then from here you can decide to put the legend or to discard it, to add borders, to do or you can put the graphicals back if you need. Uh, all that kind of things. You can choose a resolution and then bam, you can download. Okay. So, uh, sorry about that. Up here we are. Okay, so we had this is our results, and uh, so in a few minutes I tried to do the same thing that we had in Illustrator, right? With Cardis, like that. Okay, to finish up, um, another kind, quite of nice feature that actually took a few times to do uh, from Arno to develop is this kind of uh, base map where you actually have discontinuity in the in the geospatial geo areas. So we have the France Metropolitan, and then we have uh, Département d'Outre-mer, which are like islands in in, uh, in Caraïbes and in l'île de la Réunion. And so here I, I used the geolocalized datasets, and the geolocalizations works on different different areas. Although it is, there is a discontinuity between those, doing that was not exactly uh, easy because it was not planned at the beginning. So we haven't thought about that. And so the whole uh, um, um, engine of 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 putting the points on the map. Uh, needed uh, uh, this special multiple geospatial areas. Uh, under the hood, we have a full web client application. It's Ember.js, so JavaScript. We use D3 for um, for the projection and many different visualization uh, 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 utilities. Uh, you can fork that on GitHub, of course. And because it's full web, um, your data stays on your computer. So th we don't have any server. Features. It's only web, full web, which means that we, it was quite easy to provide with an Electron version for offline use, which means that you can also download a desktop application of Cartis and use it on your computer without internet. Um, there's actually a talk about Electron later this day in another room. And that's it. Here, Cartis. <laughs> Any questions? more a legal question than a technical question is when you get data, how do you know if you can reuse it to clear that? <laughs> okay, so I'm not a legal person. Um, so your question is, what is, are you allowed to reuse data to create a map? Um, I think for what I know is, um, for first thing, the data set I'm using here was, uh, I think, a DOI, so it's as uh, ready for, to publish, so there were no problem with that. Uh, but I think it's, I think a map can be understood as a, a statistical um, uh, uh, re work on data. So you're not, if you publish the map without the data sets, you're not publishing the data, so you don't have to need to have the right to publish it, because you are publishing your work of interpretation of the data. So this is a different point. And the second question was? I was, so was it? Okay. I had a second question that I asked though. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. How do you do if you have lots of different data? M maybe you want to s uh, show um, uh, natural resources, in fact, say, say I want to map oil, gold, silver, uranium, and whatever. Yeah. A lot of different symbols. Yes. Okay. So two things about that. First is this tool is is to create a thematic map. So your map is not an exploratory data analysis tool. If you want to do that, use a GIS. It's, it's good for you. Um, you will use that once you know what you want to tell your readers. And your readers will not support like too many information in one map. So you have to choose for them how you're going to, to tell your stories uh, with, with maps, which means that you might first put like a f two, three, five layers of, of symbols. You can do that in, in Cartis. Actually, in the visualization here, this is one layer, this is another layer. Uh, you, can, you can add many layers if you need. But, I mean, more than three is going to be a mess. And then you can create multiple maps. And then you're going to, to build an atlas, basically. So it's, it's really like, um, so those are, you're producing documents, people can read, and you have to make sure what you're doing is, is going to be easily, be easily readable by the people. So you cannot put too much information on it. Uh, yeah. Okay, so um, no, uh, not yet. P 
probably not that soon because our targeted audience, oh yeah, the question was, can you, can you build your own base map in Cartis? So technically you could, um, but uh, we are not going to put uh, uh, money into the user interface to do so because our targeting audience are, are students, which doesn't, doesn't know how to do that. But, but I mean, the whole system is easily uh, uh, manageable by our team of cartographers to add base maps. So the process to do that will contact them, propose the base maps, they will tell you the guidelines of which kind of base maps they can unhandle, and then put it back in the, in, the, in the source code. And you can also fork the source code, learn how to do it, and do it on your own. But there will not be like user interface to do that. Yeah, I think so. Well, I, I hope. But this is, this is a, a, a joint collaboration, so I'm speaking on the behalf of my team of cartographers. I don't know exactly what their editorial uh, you know, directions, in the, which directions they want to, to, to go, but I'm, I'm pretty sure they will um, accept contributions like new best maps. Yeah. Yeah. And can you restrict the map that you're using to a certain area as well? Yeah, of course. Look, it's I as easy I as... I don't want to see Asia, for instance. Can I just say Asia yeah. and then it it figures out Asia by itself, or do I need to do it? So you have two ways to do it. You can do it like this, yeah. and it will export only the viewable part co okay. component, or you can, uh, once, when you choose a base map, we have base map on the specific countries as France, as I showed in my slides, yeah. you might have a base map for Asia. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you.